and welcome to That Squirrel Speaks. Today is Wednesday, July 30th, and this is episode 116. Look who knows what she's talking about. It's good. There we go. Shaking the table already. I am Amy Beth, also known as The Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and The Fat Squirrel on Instagram, which is just The Fat S Q R R L. How are you today? I'm good. We are in our last week of summer vacation. It's almost back to school time. This week we went to boot camp for her school, which is basically for the parents. The kids were there too, but they took them off into the gym and like let them play games and stuff and stuff. They did the whole rundown on like this is what our school is about and these are all the things and da 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 da. So that was exciting. She just got the okay to have ice cream. Shamelessly bribing the child. <laughs> oh, so I do apologize last week. I was bribing her with a video game last week. And so you could hear the bleed through sound, which I had no idea was gonna happen. But it was kind of loud, so I apologize for that. Low budget production value. Yes. I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, so this is why I'm excited the school's going back. Because I can't complete, form a complete thought at all, ever, anytime. Actually, that's not true. From like 9 to 11 p.m., I can kind of form a complete thought, but then I'm too tired to do so. So, really, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, do you have a kid going to school? If you've got a kid going to get to your kindergarten, don't worry. It's going to be amazing. They're going to love it. I was super scared that my kid went to kindergarten a couple years ago. Some of you who have been with me for a while know. I did an embarrassingly weepy episode. <laughs> I don't know, did I cry? I probably cried. I probably teared up. <sighs> My hair is stringy, whatever. Um, I'm wearing a Sriracha t-shirt. Hello. <laughs> Lower your expectations, okay? Um, so if you've been with me for a while, you may remember me having my like, what is my kid gonna do? I just don't know if she's gonna make it. And how is she gonna be there all day? It's such a long day. And, and it's not like I'm like an obsessively attached parent. And I, I should not have used that word obsessively, but it's not like I'm in like a very attached parent even. Like she's gone places and done stuff without us. But I was just concerned about like, she's a very high energy level and I was like, oh my gosh, she's gonna lose her mind. And I was all worried and she does. She's going with essentially strangers. Like how weird is that concept? Like here stranger, here's my child. Please take care of her for like eight hours. By the way, one of the women in our boot camp totally complained about how the fact that you have to get fingerprinted every year if you want to like be alone with the children in some sort of like supervisory capacity. So like if you're like a bus, like a bus help, not a bus helper. If you're like a, what are those things called? Field trip helper and you're never like left exclusively alone with the children, then you don't have to be just if like safety checked or whatever. Which now that I think about this kind of sketchy, whatever. She's complaining that you have to be fingerprinted and like go through the whole thing if you're gonna be alone with our children. And I was like, I didn't want to be like the jerk who was like sucking up, but I was really like, really, I'm okay with the fact that I have to get fingerprinted every year because if you decide to start a meth lab in July, I would like to know about it before school starts again. You know? Anyway, that was off the track. What were we talking about? Oh, so I was like really worried about my kids in school. So this is, I try to remember to do this every schoolish time season. We read the book it's called The Kissing Hand and now I can't remember what it's why. Anyway, it's a lovely picture book, so it's completely appropriate for kindergarten, going into kindergarten, or younger, if they're going into preschool or what have you. And it's all about a mama raccoon and the baby raccoon, and the mama raccoon is sending the baby to school, and she puts a kiss on his hand, and he puts a kiss on hers, so they can be together. And so, last year and in kindergarten, in kindergarten more days, but I would draw um, because I was like, should I send her with like a little something? It's the Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn. And I thought, should I send her with like a little, and you can get it at most bookstores or you can get it on Amazon, whatever. Um, here it is on Amazon, just because that was the easiest place to pick. That's what it looks like. Anyway, it's very cute. And, um, oh, so I was thinking, oh, do I send her with like a little felt heart in her pocket or like a little knitted heart so that she can... And lovely teachers suggested that, no, really, don't send, like, an actual object with your child because, A, if it gets lost, and I thought this too, A, if it gets lost, the child will freak out. That would be my child. She would lose her mind. 
B, it's just something that fiddles and like, you know, it can come out of the pocket, it can get, you know, don't send them with like anything, because then it's distraction, basically. It's just more work for the teachers, which is not what we want to do. So I would just take a Sharpie and draw a little heart on the inside of her hand, like right here, and then she would do the same for me. And then we wave goodbye in the morning. See it? It's like a whole thing. So hopefully that helps you if you're anxious. It's gonna be okay. Plus it's awesome. <laughs> Even if you're working full time, like when you actually have to take a sick day, like you can actually be sick, at least during the day. <laughs> Not later, but you know, whatever. It's exciting. Got so planning to watch like some Lost Girl. That's not appropriate for children. In my house, in your house, you do what you want to do. <laughs> like I've planned out like all of the greater than PG-13 rated shows I need to watch. That's right gonna be a party. I mean working, but also a party. <laughs> so yeah, it's almost back to school time. I guess I should talk about what we're doing, talking about in the show. I should have done that before, but there we go. I guess I tracked. But I wanted to mention that book in case you're having anxieties and you've not been with us for two years to know that I had them too. Oh, so this week I will talk about shenanigans. And there'll be knitting and spinning. And if it's not too long, a slight game talk at the end. Board gamey style. Okay, so shenanigans! We had a an adventure. I like to call it an adventure fail. It actually was not a fail in terms of we still had an adventure. It's just not the adventure we planned on having. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> So we have been having an unnaturally cool summer. Actually, all summer I've been like, oh my gosh, I can't, what is this weird hair that is like going the wrong direction? I'm sorry. That's, that's really bothering me. Okay. I try not, I know you're like, stop touching your hair in your face. I know it's a habit. Shh, shh. I know. I try. Anyway. Words. Thoughts not having them okay well I just start over again <laughs> oh we've been having an unnatural okay so the unnaturally cool summer all right you with me sorry all right um so actually all summer I've just been like it's not hot 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 it's so exciting like we've had a few days that got above 90 but not many and I don't I don't know that we've had any that were above 95 it's been awesome. This is the best summer I can ever remember in terms of temperatures. It's been beautiful. But I did have that thought just this week, actually, where I was like, oh, I've been so busy enjoying the summer that I forgot to worry about the upcoming winter. <laughs> and like the fact that this unnaturally cool summer might mean that we're gonna have another winter of doom with Arctic blasts and whatnot. Dang it. Sorry, the winter is coming. Anyway, so it's been beautiful. It's been beautiful, but it has been a little cool for swimming. Like, because, like, you know, so unless, unless you go, and I, I tend to want to do things in the morning, because I'll just be honest, in the afternoon I start to get really grouchy sometimes. <laughs> like, my energy dips a little bit, and I get kind of grouchy. And I get a little grouchy. So I usually try to plan to do the most active things towards the morning. And so swimming... At like 11 a.m., it's kind of cold a lot of days. What? I know, right? I mean, I could totally handle it. But my child's getting a little blue run lips. <laughs> so anyway. But on Friday, I was like, okay, we're just going to go. We're going to go swimming. It's a little cool, but we're having an adventure. And I was like, we are having an adventure. We may not swim all day. We may only be in the water for an hour. We're having an adventure. We're going to Eagle Creek, which is our very big city park. It's on the northwest side of town. And it's a wonderful park. It has a beautiful nature center and it's a, um, a reservoir. So it has a big body of water and there's like a couple of really nice hiking trails. It's like a really great park. Yay, that park. Actually, yay Indianapolis parks in general. But I was like, we're going to go to the beach. We tried to go to the beach a couple of years ago up there. I know, right? Why didn't we go last year? I don't know. But we tried to go a couple of years ago with friends of ours and they were having like a regatta and we didn't realize it, right? I forgot who. I didn't think to check for regattas. I did this year. So we couldn't go last year. 
So this year we finally, we've been to that park many times, it's just not been the right time to swim or whatever. So we decided we we're gonna go swimming in the reservoir because it's supposed to be a beach. Do you, do you feel the foreshadowing? Supposed to be a beach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we get there and it is early. It's like 11 a.m. It's a little cool. It's not even, it might be 70 degrees, maybe, if we're lucky. And there's not a lot of people in the parking lot, but I think, okay, it's 11.15, it's cool, it's the middle of the week. Well, it's a Friday, but you know what I mean. It's not like weekend. So, like, that's not too crazy. We go up to the, like, shack where you pay and the bathhouse or whatever. And the little fellow is like, have you been here before? He said, I said, no. He said, would you like to tour the grounds before you pay for admission? And I'm like, <laughs> foreshadowing. <laughs> That might be a clue that this place is a little bit less than desirable. So I'm like, but I own it. I'm like, no, we're having an adventure. It's okay. It's $7. We're just going to roll those dice. So we go, we get, we go through the bathhouse because we're already wearing our suits with like something over them. We go to the bath. I'm into, I've been to other reservoirs with beaches and they're actually like beaches. It's on an ocean beach. Oftentimes the gravel, the gravel, the sand is a little bit more gravelly. Like it's not pristine and like duny and gorgeous, but you know, it's like some greenish water, but it's moving, you know, there's some movement going on and the, it's a beach and there's like a beach that you could like sit a towel on and sit on and maybe build a castle in, you know, it may not be a beautiful white sand. You can mound up some sand. You know what I mean? There's some adhesion going on. It's awesome. So that's what I'm anticipating. We go to the vet's house. By the way, I really wish I'd taken a million pictures. I didn't bring my camera because A, camera's in water. I'm a klutz. It's not always a good idea. B, I'm always concerned about theft and stuff because it's just too easy to walk off with things. And C, I'm just thinking, oh, it's going to be a like low-key like thing. We're just going to do this. It's not a big deal. There should have been documentation. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> So like, oh, there's like grass and you can see the lake. And so I'm thinking, huh, it just looks like grass in the lake. Where am I not seeing an in-between sandy type area? Maybe it's like an elevation thing and a, it's below and I'm just not seeing it. So we walk and there's, there's like aluminum like sports bleachers. But again, they hold regattas and stuff. I'm like, well, it's maybe just for that. And they just, you know, okay, you know, just roll with it. We walk closer and closer. And I'm like, still not seeing any beach. That's kind of weird. So we get all the way up to where the grass ends. So sketchy. <laughs> we get all the way to the grass ends. And there is a beach. If you would like to call it that, there's a retaining wall. There's grass and a retaining wall. There's like a two foot drop between the grass and the bottom of the retaining wall. Like there's no step, there's just like jump. And you know, that's fine for a child, but some of us don't want to hop down two feet <laughs> in a bathing suit, you know. Like I need any extra motion in my own ocean. No, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. And then the beach that's what we're calling it, is approximately a swath of stand about 12 inches. I'm not kidding you. I wear a size 11 shoe. Okay, 12 inches might have 18 inches. Let's say 18 inches. I don't think I could have gotten two feet in front of each other. And <laughs> like that's how narrow the sand is. So let's say 18 inches. Whatever, let's say 24. Let's we'll just give it 24 inches. There's this much beach. <laughs> and it's approximately 12 feet long. And it dwindles. Like 24 is the widest point. 24 inches, like here we go, I saw Slee's triangle time. 24 inches down to nothing in about 12 feet, I'm saying guessing-ish. Then, like that's not bad enough, right? So there's that like beach. <laughs> then you can't, you can wade 
out approximately another two feet because two feet beyond the sandy part, there's like a, a rope, like a buoy rope. Like you can't go beyond it. And the water is so stagnant and brackish. There's duck feathers everywhere. Now granted, there are, and I counted, there are seven lifeguards there, and there are two in their chairs, and then the other five are, like, you know, teenage style, picking up the random, like, flotsam. You know, like, oh, here's a giant twig that brushed up, brushed up, washed up on the shore. Here, uh, they couldn't do anything about the goose feathers. I'm not, I'm not judging them. <laughs> they have a rake to, like, to rake the sand. The gravel. It was gravel. No, it was sand. It's fine. Gravel. It was awesome. <laughs> so my child, my child, does not even walk into that water. <laughs> she was deterred by the goose feathers, <laughs> the duck feathers, whatever. And then they have like a children's swimming area, which is supposed to be three feet deep, and it really is like the size of an average Holmes dining room. And it's buoyed off. And there are like stairs that you have to like walk down stairs and then the water's... <laughs> I'm sure there are stairs below the water level, but you can't see that because it's green water. It's lake water. So it really just looks like you're supposed to jump off these stairs into this brackish mosquito. There were no mosquitoes, but I'm just imagining the larvae. Just this stagnant water. <laughs> and there's like a floating dock. Which is like weird. It's like a rubber dock. I don't understand what that is. And then on the other side of that is the uh, like the five foot area, the swimming pool, the the swimming area that goes out to five feet. It also has its own stairs <laughs> that lead to nothing, and it also has like a uh, like a it's ramp. So I there was a minute when I didn't see the ramp where I was really like, I don't even know how to approach this situation. Like. I don't know how I'm going to get myself into that water because again, there's like this retaining wall. It's not, what, how do I, I mathematically am confused about how this is going to work. <laughs> and my child is too. This is how I feel the whole time. I'm not upset. I'm just like, this is ridiculous. And of course she's like, she's mildly horrified because <laughs> she's been in lakes before, but this is very lake fantastic. <laughs> So we, okay, oh, I see the ramp. Okay, that looks, okay, that looks good. Cause I get those steps, they just, they just stop and you don't know what's under there. And what if I step down and there's actually no step there and I just like fall into the water and then how am I gonna pull myself back up out of there? Like, what is happening? What is happening? So anyway, so we see the ramp. Yay, ramp! We go down the ramp and there's, all, <laughs> again, some duck feathers, some general, Gooshiness, like not gooshiness, but you know, there's just it's a lake. My daughter's like, Are there dead bugs in here? I'm like, Oh, yeah, <laughs> there are dead bugs, there are live bugs, there are baby bugs, there's dead fish. Like, this is it, kid. And the lifeguard, very good humoredly, is like, Oh, there are maybe even dead bodies. <laughs> I'm like, And my daughter's like, I'm like, No, not right here, though, they're out there for them. <laughs> so, we get so. It is what it is. We're two people with seven lifeguards. We're very safe. Very safe. Some 20 somethings showed up later and I had to giggle. Because they were young and the boys were boys, whatever. But the girls are in full on like itty bitty bikinis in this lake. They looked very prissy. They were not like, they were not rushing to get into that water. I don't know how they got guilted into it. <laughs> <laughs> so they like all floundered around so we you know 45 minutes later I was just like okay it's cold you know like oh, are we done with this adventure she's like I'm totally done with this adventure so like there's an awesome playground to play on that kind of helped make that trip it's like a 20 minute trip from the house more reasonable and there were the other things at the park to do which we did it was awesome. 
One thing that was cool though that I did fail on, they have like an inflatable floating slide platform and trampolini platform, which it used to be that you had to take a swimming test to get on there, but apparently they now have life jackets so that even kids can do it. And I did not realize that because nobody was doing it while we were there. It wasn't until we got on the playground that people started to utilize that function for an additional $3. Um, but even so, I was like, you know what, that's, that's a Papa and you activity. That's all about you and Papa. <laughs> because Mama is not, I do not have the upper body strength, I don't think, and the total lack of shame to somehow get my floating body in water, buoyant and happy, up onto a floating platform to then get up on a floating trampoline. I don't think that's happening where anybody else can see it. <laughs> there would have to be a dry run where there was nobody present. <laughs> and that's not gonna happen. So, so that's you, Papa. That's, that's something for you guys to do. <laughs> but anyway, it was an adventure fail in the most wonderful way. I don't think that she'll ever remember it, but I certainly will. <laughs> it was awesome in its very sketchy way. She's currently trying to bring in, I bought a new Swift and I think it was being delivered today. So I think she's trying to bring that in the house right now. And I hear the front storm door just rattling like crazy. I don't know if you can hear that too or not. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about spinning and knitting, shall we? Okay, spinning. I finished my Pullworth from Spun Right Round in the Feather colorway. You see it's still on a bobbin. That's because I'm getting a new Swift, but I'm getting that shock twin, which is also a skein winder. So I was just saving this for that. So I'll, I'll probably show you next week again, like washed and thwacked and all that happy stuff. And then I also finally spun up my Into the World, is it Don't Blink? It was the SSK colorway from last year. I think it's Don't Blink. So I did that one as a three ply. And again, I'll show you next week wash it black so you can get a better idea of it, but it's very pretty. Did I say it was super wash BFL? I don't think I said that. And of course, her stuff is always lovely to work with. And I think it's very, I think I'm going to like it. It's all grays and purple and a little bit of aqua color, maybe. Um, and again, it was just four ounces. This is eight ounces. This is not all of it, but just, just to show you I did it for some reason. I feel like I need to do that. Keeping tabs on me, or something. and then I do have some spindle spinning in progress, but they're over there. Um. Okay, I'm gonna stop this for just a second. Okay, she totally wasn't. I thought she was like trying to wrestle something in the storm door, and it was taking like three minutes. And I thought I need to go out there and check to see what's going on. She's totally on the elliptical. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that that could possibly be what that noise was, but now it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> I did get this while I was up. This is one of my spindle spinning projects that I actually finished. It's a bat from Hobbledy Hoy, like a, when I got, like she sometimes sends you like a little sample bat just for funsies and some Coopworth. It's just a little bitty thing. I don't It's like 30 yards, whatever. I totally dig it though. It's like all confetti-tastic. It's a birthday cake. It's so fun. It's a baby. So the Coopworth, I will show you just briefly. The Coopworth is what I got in Sadie's class at SSK this year. So she gave us some raw fleece that we were to take home and wash. Not that we had to, but that, you know, like that, that's what the class was about, it was about washing fleece. So I'll show you. I'm trying to get a lock of it up. It's not too. Well, that's kind of a cruddy one. <laughs> I got some of the end, like some of it was near the skirting area, which was like less beautimous than what was near the middle, which is totally normal. I just want to give you a really pretty one to show you. Okay. So it looks like this. This is the washed one. It's not been flicked or anything. So see it? Look at those crinkle fries. So awesome. So that was one of my experiments I did this week was to wash that. And it went really well, I think. Maybe. And now I have this lovely bag of white fleece. Yay! And all I did before I spun it was just 
flick out the ends with a brush. You could just use a dog brush. I did secretly I bought accidentally I bought hello secretly I bought this last year at or this spring um at the Woolery's booth at the fiber event because I thought it was a flicker brush but it's really a doffer brush but really it's a brush and that's all you need <laughs> but I think I will buy a little cheap dog brush just because these bristles are very firm and this doesn't it doesn't necessarily need that firm of a hand and I'm less likely to tear my fingers up if I use a dog brush. So all you have to do is just kind of like open up the ends a little bit. And I'm trying not to hurt myself, so I'm being a little bit more tender. Gin ginger. Ginger? I'm being ginger, ginger. And you just open up both the cut end and the tips, which is super easy. And then you have this lovely little bit to spin. Isn't that fun? So yeah. So I washed them in the lock, which is what we talked about in the class. I didn't do the greatest job, you can still see, but whatever, it's fine. It's so crinkly and fluffy. So yay, that. Um, so that's a little bitty scheme. Okay, so knitting. I finished an object, I'm wearing it, can you tell? I finished my Mama Vertebrae, which I knit out of cotton-ish, it's Bernat cotton-ish in the charcoal colorway on US fours. I did do this border on twos in the border um, and I will try to put a picture here if not there are pictures on my project page I know I actually updated a project page Kill me. I will also insert this caveat that picture of me like kind of straight on is, a, is unnaturally flattering like, I feel like you have to full dating site disclosure. Like, that is an unnaturally flattering photograph. I'm not wearing Spanx. I don't know what happened, but it is, I, I'm like, ooh, that's good. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but my child took a magic photo, which was awesome. Okay. Do I need to say anything else about that? I think I've said all the things I need to say about it. Right? Right. Okay, so that in that vein, I am also knitting another Mama Vertebrae out of Knit Picks Lindy Chain in the plum colorway, which I discussed last week. Oh, really? Smoky violet, maybe? <laughs> violet smoke, maybe? Okay, so I'm knitting this on US 5s? US 4s. That's right. That's right. Oh, this was not. Was this on 4s? Okay, I no longer know what this is knit on, but it'll be in the show notes. I think it was fours. Maybe it was fives. Maybe this was knit on fives. <laughs> I no longer know anything, apparently. I was knitting something on fives. <laughs> so, it's another of the Mama Vertebrae's, and I have this much done. So last week I had just done the armholes together so from now I'm here to here. Yay that. Okay. What else do I need to talk about? Um oh I have another finished object. I guess I should have done that. Just in the vein of using it my SSK stuff. This was not something I bought at SSK. But from last year this was the SSKers FTW, which was the colorway that Highland Handmaids had available at the market, and then I have actually purchased mine afterwards. And this is just a plain little stockinette cap with a hemmed edge. I think I'm gonna keep it, this is the reverse side. I think I like it best. So just Sachi, I still have some yarn left. Maybe enough for children's mitts or something. I don't rightly know. But yay that! Hats are always good. And I will talk more about it because I made a pattern and it's homespun, so <laughs> that's useless to you, essentially. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, next, I've been working on my Vivid Squares. This is from The Handmade in the UK, which is an ebook that was put out by Ten Can Knits. That's right, right? Right, that's right. And this is the Vivid Blanket. The Vivid Pattern is also available as an individual download. 
or you can get the whole ebook. And I'm making one, making one out of peace fleece. So I made four more squares this week. I haven't knit on it forever. Like perhaps literally. No, it's not literally, but you know what I mean. This is Glasnost Gold. So I've got two of those. This is something else. And this is something else. I love them though. So I have a warm colored one for me. And I don't know how big it's going to be yet. And then, in, uh, I was high. This is my excuse for everything. I was high. <laughs> On wool, by the way. Just FYI. <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to say anything else. On wool. Um, <laughs> I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, people might not understand that that's me being silly. You should not, you understand that. This whole thing is me being silly. Okay, whatever. Moving on. Um, I also bought enough for to make my husband one that's all blues and grays. I got some peace fleece up in y'all. <laughs> I think if I make his, did you notice I said if, when, whatever. I think what I'm gonna do, I saw a couple that I really liked where they, they did just this part in the color and, but they did the border in the, in one color. So each square had a different colored middle or, you know what I mean, seven different middles, whatever. But the border was all one color. So I think if I go to do it again, not only will I do that, but I think I'll also make this border a little bit more narrow because this part is super fun to knit. The little like lacy bit in the middle. The border is not as fun. It's not like it's bad, but it's just like pff, soggy. So, I don't know. And I'm also worried about, I know that they all block out okay, because everybody's does. But it's also like a little bit nervous because it looks so warbly. It's gonna block, it's gonna be fine. So yeah, that, I don't know, will I work more on that? I'm not sure. But I enjoy making these four squares. I actually got a lot done this week. Go me, I'm fancy. Okay, I'll show you that next week because I've already talked enough. Oh, like, why does this only say nine minutes? Because I had to stop it. That's right. <laughs> okay, so I showed you that. Okay, the last thing I will show you is I am working on this crazy thing. This is the Panda Silk DK Fan Shawl. See it there. And it is a free pattern. It's by Crystal Palace Yarns. And it is designed and knit by Gail Tanqueray. Tanqueray, something like that. And I'm knitting it with hand spun. This is a loop bullseye bump. It's one of the short color change ones rather than the long color change ones. By the way, if you're playing the drinking game where you have to drink when I touch my hair, I don't recommend it. You're gonna have alcohol poisoning. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, this is my loop bullseye bump. And this was the, was it curry? I think it was the curry colorway. I think it was curry. So I just spun it as a single. It's like a fingering weightish single. Maybe lighter than a fingering weight. And let's see if we can find the right side. Okay, this is the right side. Now it's lace, so it just looks like a hot mess right now, but I think it's gonna be awesome. So I'm on my last row of full motifs, and then I'll work like half motifs. I think I'm gonna have enough yarn. I'm a little bit nervous, but I mean, I could have stopped it shorter, but then it would have been really tiny. And if I have to, I can use another hand. There's like a solid garter stitch border at the very top, so I can use another hand spun or whatever um, that's in a similar color family because Lord knows I may have some of this color somewhere. <laughs> I think I'm going to take it though. And it's super fun to knit because, again, it's a little bit lacy, so there's something going on, but it's also not at all complicated. But it's just something other than stuck in it. And then you do a little motif, move on. Do a little motif, move on. It's fun. I like it. I'm knitting that on US fives. Is this what I'm knitting on fives? Maybe this is what I've been knitting on fives. Really? <laughs> ah. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so, the reason I picked up my Vivid Squares, they're piece lace, the worsted. So it's like a very wooly woolen yarn. I was, I've been, I know it's July, right? But I've been having like crazy intense, like I want to knit all of the wooly wooly yarn. Because I, I can't, I'm out of control. Like I want scratchy yarn for some reason. I don't understand what's going on. My body's just preparing for the winter, I guess. But it's July, body, chill out. Right? Settle down. Okay. So there will be a shop update, but it'll be August 8th. So that's the second Friday in August. I usually try to do the first and thirds, but A, summer's been crazy. And B, I was, I went this last week to do stuff with the kiddo. So it'll be August 8th. So then I think what we're going to talk about very briefly, I feel like there's something else I should be talking about, but I don't know what it is. Very briefly, I want to talk about this game. This game is called Morels. It's a two person game. In fact, it's called a strategic foraging and feasting for two. Sold. <laughs> I'm in. And it is a game that's done by Two Lantern Games. Uh, it's approximately 30 minute play time for two players. And it, I recommend 10 and up. Um, Tova is seven and a half. But she's been playing games for a very long time. So she was fine. Um, but again, she has a lot of board game experience, so it might, I think 10 is a little old, but it just depends on your kid. You know your kid. So this is Becca. Oh my gosh, you guys. It's really a game. If you've seen The Midsummer Murders, the episode that's about the people who hunt for mushrooms, she gets murdered in the woods because she sees a brother and sister on blanket together. You know how Midsummer Murders is. <laughs> I love Midsummer Murders. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know why. Oh, because I think they talk about the chicken in the woods mushroom a lot during that. And there's a chicken in the woods card. So I get like the excitement of that in, in addition to the funness of the game. I'm sold. Okay, so it's a game and you lay your cards out. Like I tried to explain, I'm, again, this is not a review. This is just like, yay, I like this game, okay? There are other reviews online. If you check, if you even go to YouTube and search Morel's game review, you probably have to put game in there. Um, and then you get it. And you get like these little frying pans. Basically what it is, it's a card game in which you collect sets. And they're sets of mushrooms. So in order to do that, the cards are like laid out and it's supposed to mimic you walking through the forest, getting deeper and deeper. So you're, you have the option to get these little walking sticks, right? These walking stick tokens, and they allow you to walk further into the forest, which is essentially deeper into the pile that's coming out of cards, in case there's something you want. What is this? What is this? Anyway. <laughs> My Tara has his own walking stick. And... Yeah, so you're just collecting sets of these cards. But they're really lovely. And it's mushrooms. So when you collect a set of three or more, you get to use your little frying pan and fry them up. Right? So that's cute. Also, if you get more than four, you can add butter to your set and cook it with butter, and then it's even worth more points. Or if you have five or more, you can use apple cider. And you can cook your mushrooms with apple cider in your skillet and get even more points. Tova doesn't love it quite as much as I She enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> so there are also night mushrooms. If you get the night card, you get to pick from the night mushroom pile, which is like they're worth extras. If you get a basket, you can carry more mushrooms in your hand. Right? Of course I want this. Here's the end of the woods. Okay, so then this though, okay, so I like this game. So again, it's collecting sets. The cards are laid out with like a, the full pile and then you have like eight cards and then like they move into the discard pile and you can like pick the discard. You can use your walking stick to go further into the forest to get the mushroom you really want because there are certain mushrooms that are more rare, like the morel. 
or the shiitake. There are fewer of those cards, and so the sets become um, more intense to, to hunt for. But this is one of the best things about this game. There's, an, there's a card in here called the, the Destroying Angel. And essentially, it, you don't ever pick it up, but it can go into the discard pile. And you might decide that you really want that discard pile because there's a bunch of stuff you wanted in it. This is what it looks like. So this is the bad card, right? Here's the description of the bad card, though. Let's see. Where's the Destroying Angel? Oh, I'm such a fail. Come on, you're in here somewhere. Why can't I find it? There it is. Here's the description of the Destroying Angel. I love it. The Destroying Angel, as its name implies, is the mushroom equivalent of a fire-laced weapon of the ancients. It is fear and wrath organically woven. When you collect a destroying angel from the forest or decay, it does not enter your hand. Rather, it enters your system and you must fight through the ensuing pain. It basically makes you discard a bunch of your cards. How hilarious is that? It is fear and wrath organically woven. Sold! Time seven. <laughs> Love it. So anyway, so that's Morels. Again, it's by Two Lantern Games. It's a game by Brent Povis and art by Vince Dorse. I'm assuming it's German in origin, as all truly awesome board games are. <laughs> and people. Um... No, I don't want Inspector Morse. How did Morels get corrected to Morse? How did that even happen? I, Apple, come on. It's $25 currently on Amazon Prime, which is the retail price. So if you have a local game store, give them your dollars. So yay that. Okay, so is that enough of me? Probably. Okay, I hope you have a great week week wait week oh stitches midwest i will not be there hope you have a lovely time also i was really going to try to make it to the michigan fiber festival i don't know if i can anymore right because clearly i needed to go buy a fleece not at all i might already have one <laughs> it's my job right it's totally legit anyway but anyway, so there's just nothing bad is happening. But like my husband, my partner's workflow is in flux and it's, a, you know, we're back to school and like it's the whole thing. So I'm not sure if I can go, but I really want to go. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely week and I'll talk to you next time. I'll totally talk to you next time.